patent attorneys, everybody in this room, have front row seats to some of the most amazing inventions today. And yet the tools that we use for our jobs oftentimes don't reflect that technology. There's a few trends converging on the modern patent attorney, especially in the drafting space. On the one hand, there's been a downward pressure on budgets and on fees that's pushing the patent attorney to spend less time drafting each application. On the other hand, there's been an upward pressure on quality to make sure the patent has everything necessary to survive a gauntlet of 101 or PTAB challenges. So the patent attorney who's drafting finds themselves squished between these forces but does it have to be that way? Do they have to make a decision between quality and time? We didn't think so. So we decided to look into what can we automate to turn that regular patent attorney into someone who could get more done in less time. We opted for sort of the Iron Man approach. What automation can we bring alongside an ordinary person and allow them to become a superhero in their tasks? so that they're smarter than they would otherwise be, more accurate than they would otherwise be, and faster than they would otherwise be. So we set out to make those tools. Let me, let me show them to you. Before I do that, I'd like to talk about quickly just the parts of a patent application. You've got claims, you've got figures, you've got uh, an abstract. Does the attorney have to do all of those things? So if we're looking at the screen right now, what we're seeing is all the tasks that a patent drafter needs to make sure is done. The patent attorney, of course, should be front and center on drafting the claim set. That's the strategic part. But do they have to draft all the claims? What if they only have to draft the first set of claims and then we could take care of the other statutory classes for them? Okay, so let's move on to the figures. Well, do they have to draft all the figures? What if we could take care of the things that are boilerplate or reused from other applications? Okay, so what about flowcharts? What if we could just automatically generate flowcharts from the text, as well as the, the text of the claims, as well as the corresponding description? So other things that we can probably take care of with natural language processing are things like summaries, abstracts, filling in forms. These things are all very easy for computers to do and very time consuming and sort of boring for humans to do. Suddenly this task list to generate a patent application is not looking as daunting as it did a minute ago. Rather than talk about it, let's just show you. Our first question was, where do we put this tool set? So where do our patent attorneys work? They work in Microsoft Office. They use Microsoft Word. That's what they use to draft in. They use Visio. So we thought, Let's put our tools directly in the environment that they're already working in. So what you see at the top here is a ribbon that's been added to the top of Microsoft Word, and the tools are individual tasks that can be automated in that process. Let's take a look at some of them. Claim mirroring, for instance. We're gonna take an extreme example. Here's a, here's a set of claims that have been drafted. It's 20 claims, I think-ish, with three independent claims. We've got three independent method claims. So here it points out, hey, you've got these kinds of method claims. What statutory classes would you like to mirror them into? Attorney chooses, they click mirror. At this point, it sends all that text to the natural language processing engine, and that engine decides, how do I turn this method claim into a device claim or into a uh, uh, computer-readable medium claim? So in this case, we've changed this method claim into a restaurant device has the header for a device that, that this client prefers to have, takes the text and the limitations from that method claim, does all the natural language processing necessary to make sure that the verbs are conjugated correctly, everything is looking like it should. Let's scroll down through tons of claims in this case. I told you this was an extreme example. Uh, 72, it's got functional claiming. We can add that as part of the mirroring process. And attracts dependency, so you don't have to you know, remember claim four depends from claim one, so that are for claim 72. This we find saves on average a half an hour to an hour of our patent attorney time in every case. With an added bonus, it's more accurate. So if you're looking for perfectly mirrored claims, you have perfectly mirrored claims. If you want to vary the scope of the claims, go ahead. At that point, go ahead and vary the scope of your, your device claim 
but then it's done on purpose, not by accident. Let's take a look at another tool, drawing library. Say you've got some figures that happen to occur in a, in a lot of your cases. So the attorney decides it's time to put in a, a drawing. They choose the drawing tool. A list, a library of available drawings show up. Let's choose a cloud and computing environment. Let's put it in as figure one. Part of the magic here is it inserts the text in the description and the drawing in the Visio uh, file at the same time. And it synchronizes up the element numbers. So here we'll see the uh, element numbers because we chose figure one. It's renumbered everything to have figure one style element numbers. You can put in pages and pages of text this way that correspond to the image, and you don't have to do anything. This, is, this part of the application is done. It's ready to be filed. Freeing that attorney to spend more time on those drawings that are, are really central to the patent application. What we find with this is this saves about 30 minutes in a patent application. You could copy and paste the stuff from a prior application and, and just you know, put it in there, but then you're changing all the element numbers. You're doing all the work necessary to do that. And still, higher accuracy. You don't have something accidentally numbered 500 when it should have been 300. Let's take a look at the next one, flowchart descriptions. Flowchart descriptions is, is one of the, the most straightforward things that we can do directly from the claim set. So say we've got the, the claim set. We choose our flowchart description tool. And then you choose which claims you want to be the basis of your flowchart. So in this case, the, uh, the attorney's going to put in three separate flowcharts with all of their dependent claims. So they choose if they want a particular style. They can choose multi-dependency support if, if they're looking for that for, for a European patent. And here we're putting in 34 paragraphs that correspond to the language taken out of the claim set and put into the drawing. And here we're describing that drawing in detail. So it's full support for every limitation in the independent claims. And then you also have the dependent claim support as well, as you would expect in a flowchart description. Once again, it's ready to be filed. If you want to tweak it for some reason, you can. If you want a different template, if, you, if your flowcharts are different for this client than for client A than client B, you have two templates, one template for each. This saves from an hour to two hours in, in every patent application. Auto abstract and auto summary, um, as you would expect, these are pr pretty easy tasks for natural language processing. You take the claims, oftentimes claim one or all the independent claims, and you click on the tool and it inserts your summary for you. As you see, the, there was no summary, now there is a summary, it's ready to be filed uh, in the style that this particular client likes. Same with the abstract, it takes claim one, you choose if you want a particular template, it gives you the, the claim itself, 139 words in this case, make sure you're within the 150 limit, and it dumps it into your document. You're ready to go. You don't have to spend any more time on this. this the abstract and the summary are not huge time-consuming tasks, but on average, it's at least 15 minutes that we save. So form filling, another obvious thing that we should be doing in our industry. We shouldn't be spending any time, any of our time or any of our staff time filling out forms. <clears throat> So let's take a look at that tool. Once again, we built it right into Microsoft Word. You choose the tool. It comes up with a library of forms, and it auto-selects the ones that this client prefers to file for this application. So we have a, a hypothetical application, 99999, and these are the forms that the attorney is going to choose. They can look for less frequently used forms if they choose that. So let's say they want to file a track one. They look through the list. Sure enough, track one request, add it, click generate. At this point, the tool reaches out to your docketing system, grabs all the information for the client, all the information for all the inventors, fills out the forms, they're ready to be filed. And the amount of time it would have taken you to contact your assistant and ask for the forms to be generated, you're looking at and signing the forms. I had an attorney call me up at 11.30 at night on a Friday thanking me for this tool, because his assistant obviously wasn't working at 11.30 at night, and he was, he was getting ready to file an application that had 15 inventors. He was dreading filling out the ADS for the last half of drafting the application, but it had to be filed that night. It was a bar date, had to be filed by midnight. He said, wow, I I've did all the forms in, in 30 seconds. On average, that saves someone in your firm 30, uh, 30 minutes per case. 
Let me switch gears quick. So everything I've shown you right now has been in Microsoft Word. It's been generating text. But we, we paused at one point and we said, is there anything else we can do? Is there anything else that's, that's easy to do at this point that we can shorten the time process? We've all been in the situation where you've got a new patent application or a new uh, invention disclosure, and you look at it and you go, I've seen this before. If only I had that case that I worked on three months ago, I'd, I'd have a huge head start in getting started with this particular application. Or maybe not, maybe I haven't seen it before, but somebody at my firm or somebody at my company had to have done something like this before because this is not sounding like, like it's completely new. We decided to come up with some way to search for that. But part of the problem is there, there really aren't great tools. We've all got document management systems where you can search, but then you're drilling into the file system, opening up documents. No, this is not it. OK, no, that's not it either. Or you go to some internet search tool, and you say, I want to search for you know, this particular invention. Problem is, there's nothing that's not published in that collection. The thing that you're looking for was filed three months ago. It's still not published. So we invented the, the private portfolio search. So here you just take your search terms that you want for this particular invention disclosure. You type them in. Say you want to search just the claims. We come up with some hits. Let's say we want to narrow this down. We want to search by tag, technology tags, or we want to search by a particular inventor, or an in-house attorney, or we want to search for a particular drafting attorney, or an assignee. In this case, we'll choose a, an inventor. Let's say John. Once we choose this inventor, we see just what that inventor has invented, and that, that's been uh, filed with the USPTO. All of this is populated from private pair. So for this particular portfolio, we can find exactly the documents that our client has. You have what you'd expect. You've got the abstracts. You've got the drawings. You've got the specification and the claims. They can use this then to get a huge head start on drafting that next application and potentially identifying what do they want to focus on in light of the things that this inventor has done before. Of course, you can click in. All these documents are retrieved from private pair, so you can see the actual documents that were filed. If you want to copy and paste or, or if you just need to see the actual originals. So this tool we found is super helpful to avoid the cold start problem. So if you're, you're starting from an absolute blank uh, patent application, it gets you started. In cases where it, it, it applies, like you find something useful, it can save you up to three hours. Sometimes you don't find something that's relevant. But then you know right away there's not anything, rather than spending that one to two hours looking and coming up with nothing. So let's take a look again at our drafting task list. Here's everything that we identified before that needs to be done. And if we move it to what we can automate, we get a picture that looks a lot more like this. On the left-hand side, we've got what's still being done by the human. They're focusing more of their time on the claim set, more of their time on the example figures, more of their time on the background or describing the problem and the solution, and very little time on all those other tasks that really are not adding the, the, the human element to the patent application. Our goal has always been to enable our patent attorneys to get more done without having to work harder. They're working plenty hard. But what do we do to, to, to give them the ability to get home to their families and still be heroes to their clients? Our tools have, have, have given them that ability. We've, we've gotten enormously positive feedback from, from our attorneys and, and people who have tried the tool. Um, and I want to encourage everyone here, this, this is not an unattainable mission. We built this set of tools in a little over a year of focused effort. So your team and your, your tools can be different than ours. But somehow, figure out a way to turn your team into superheroes. Thanks. Great. Thank you.